I begin in the name of God Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful. I bear witness and testify to the fact that there is but one and only one God. Allah and that Muhammad and Humi peace, he is the messenger, the seed of prophets. My dearest, most beloved and divine brothers and sisters in Islam, in the concourse of humanity and the fraternity of religions, may the peace the mercy, the blessings of God Almighty be with one and all. The nation Guyana, our government, our opposition leaders, and indeed with the Caribbean, the world over. Peace and blessings. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, I say to them, Guyana and the world over, Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. Greetings in the name of God Almighty on this magnificent and beautiful month of privilege and blessings and service to God Almighty and service to humanity. The month which raises us from lowness to the glory of God Almighty, which takes us from goodness to better and to the best. For us to strive to be greater and better, to be like the great prophets of God Almighty of you, like Hazrat Adam who fasted, his descendants, Abraham, Moses, Ishmael, Noah, Isaac, Jesus, Muhammad, all the great prophets who fasted. This fast the God Almighty is a very special thing, Jesus Christ from Holy Peace fasted for 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain. And it was only after that fast was he given the power of healing. Before that he could not have healed. And Moses, only when he went up onto the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights before he was able to receive the Ten Commandments. To the point where his people downstairs of, of the mountain were losing faith in what he was doing. And he fasted and he was able to speak to God Almighty. Noah, the great prophet of God Almighty, Abraham, the patriarch, they all fasted. Because it is the command of God and because by doing away without food, and certain wants and needs and satis physical satisfaction and by imbibing the words of God Almighty by reciting the words of God Almighty in constant worship in a dedicated format not once in a while not today and then maybe next week or maybe next three days or maybe next month but day after day in their, in their case, it was 40 days. In our case, it is compulsive. It is a complete compulsion for 29 or 30 days. One complete month. But we are encouraged also to do some, at least six or seven before, or six or seven after, which even takes us about, above the time which the prophets have used to draw their powers 
from God Almighty. This month, therefore, is not just about doing away with food and water and drink and all the forms of pleasure, even marital pleasures, from morning till dusk. But it is about taqwa, God-centeredness. The immersion of the self with the super soul. Being oneness with God Almighty. Develop, developing that relationship, that connection, the divine contact. And this is precisely why the Muslims would observe this month. And for the entire year, some people think it's a kind of masochism. Being masochists. Like enjoying pain. Because we do it on food and water for an entire month. And you know what? I'm going to take this water away from here. Because today is Friday. The Ramadan starts the day you will start seeing this program, which is tomorrow. And having the water here will encourage people to want to... To take, I'm, I'm, I'm taking water during the month of Ramadan. And during this month, there is serious thirst and want. There is serious hunger and want. But what is it? Is it just about starving oneself without the basic needs of survival? Is it, is, is it just that? For us Muslims, it is because, first of all and foremost, because it is the command of God Almighty that you will not eat or you will not drink anything, not desire to, not wish to. Because with the hunger, with that voluntary starvation, that voluntary thirst, the Muslims can empathize with poverty. The Muslim can understand what it is like to be hungry, what it is like to be thirsty. And this is why the world over we always find Muslims to be extremely charitable of what to give more and more. And in our case we are compelled, particularly during this month, and if we miss it any time in the year, to give the zakah. The zakah, the compulsive tax, the command of God Almighty to give two and a half percent of your earnings and your wealth once you have the base Nisab and I think the Nisab now is about $180,000 anything over that you have to pay Zakah anything under that you could collect Zakah so we have to give this Zakah for the cause of the maintenance of the Muslim in poverty and in need and the societies and also to help in the propagation and maintenance of masjids and so forth and so forth. Better yet, if it all could go to the individuals who most need it. But then above that, the test of true faith of God is not doing the charity that God commands you, not doing the charity that you are ordered to, that is the zakah, but there is kairat, the voluntary charity now which you give from your heart to the world in general to humanity in general to peoples of any faith even to the maintenance of the animals you give Kairat and these are the factors that is extraordinary to blend this up with another teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, a Muslim cannot go to bed knowing his neighbor is hungry. A Muslim cannot go to bed knowing his neighbor is hungry. This is a very serious coaxing and guidance. For it is what will raise us to glory. And your neighbor is not just the man next door, but if down the road you know someone is in trauma, in turmoil, their house burned down. The, the, the husband gone to prison. Some catastrophe, accidents, people in need, somebody hungry. 
Even the animal kind. Because an animal could be our neighbor and is hungry. We cannot see an animal in suffering, much less a human being. But this is the glory, the greatness of Islam. But my brothers and sisters, in the end, I will tell you, as you're about to approach the end, once you observe this month, with the love, the dedication, the commitment, and you follow the rules, I can tell you, there is a spiritual change within the individual. There is a spiritual upliftment, a development within the psyche of the faster if he is cognizant enough to realize it. If he's sharp enough to realize it and to see it, that there's a change within himself. He becomes like the prophet, like the seers. He starts to feel more godlike because he has been absorbed with and by the super soul. He becomes closer to God Almighty, the taqwa, the oneness with God Almighty. Our Hindu brothers, brothers and sisters refer to it as nirvana. Our Christian brothers and sisters call it oneness with God, closeness with God. It is a magnificent metamorphosis of the human being to one of godliness, to one who could actually heal physically, to one who could heal the human physically if he is ill, to one who could heal the earth if it is full of disease and cannot produce, to one who has the strength to change the weather. I know what I'm telling you brothers and sisters, that if you need the rains, you can actually call the rains, and if you want no rain for a function or a particular purpose, can't do it forever, but you can put a, a stop to the rain at that moment. And this is the power that many of the prophets got, and especially King Solomon, Suleiman, King Solomon was no ordinary human being. He had the power, and he said that we could do it too. He had the power to use the wind to travel from land to land and nation to nation and Jesus Christ in holy peace. He was the master healer, the mystical master that we the Muslims have great respect and honor for and if we do not respect and honor him as one of the mighty sons of God as the Bible says. God has sons by the tongues in the Bible. All the prophets were his sons. But we are commanded to honor him. He got his ability to heal and change circumstances only after he fasted on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. For those who do not know, they need to know and realize that. He wasn't born with the power. He didn't have it all the time. Even when he disappeared for 14 days, for 14 years of the face of the earth as we know, they didn't know where he was. We know where he was and what he was doing. He was with the ancient order of the Essenes and they were protecting him and taking him to foreign lands. But when he came back and he met and he was baptized, he didn't have the power of healing after the fasting. When he told Satan or Shaitan, when he tempted him with the bread, turned the stone into bread, he fasted and he suffered and he was in thirst and he said, Be gone! You shaitan, you satan. And it was about that time, it was coming to the end of the fast, that he drew the power of healing onto himself. These are certain things that people need to understand. The power of the fast, of the Ramadan. It breaks us out of the mold of insularity, thinking of oneself. It breaks us out of the mold of vanity. It takes away the base animalistic instincts out of our existence. And we immerse ourselves in the worship of the super soul like Jesus and Moses and the mountain and all the other prophets in worship to God Almighty. And many Muslims do not realize 
that during this month and coming to the end of the month, they become holyized. They become empowered. They become embedded with the Spirit of God. And they have the capacity to change weather. To cause the dead earth to grow. By praying to God Almighty and blessing the earth. Bringing forth fish from the sea. Bringing out agriculture, produce from the land, dead land. This is the power that God Almighty is giving to the Muslims this time. And this time forever and ever for all times. Because this Quran is the final testament to humanity. For all times, there can be no other testaments. It's the third and the last and final testament of God Almighty. We respect the Holy Bible, the first and the second. And now the third and the last. And if you read it with an open heart, you who are not Muslims, you will see the connection with the scriptures. And there is, the Quran tells us that it came as a very fire and as a protector of the previous scriptures, never, never mind those mad people in the Middle East and in Afghanistan, those fanatics. They do not understand the glory and the power of their Quran. This Quran is for all times, and there are certain sections that even refers us to the previous scriptures, showing the continuation and the connection and the harmony of the scriptures and the revelations. The Quran tells us, as for the prophets, we make no distinction between any of them. That some we can mention and some we do not mention. But all the prophets have their greatness and their purpose and their service to God Almighty. So as far as the Ramadan is concerned, my beloved brothers and sisters, I will take a rest on speaking on the Ramadan because for the rest of the month you will be hearing quite a lot from me and from others about this fasting month and the glory of the Ramadan. So at this time I will take a rest from speaking on the fast and I will go to the Holy Quran to read you some useful excerpts that will give us mental rest, healing, harmony, and peace in our hearts. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one true God, Allah, says that hearts rest best with God Almighty. Hearts rest best with Allah. So whatever is the problem, whatever is the crisis, Whatever is the, the disappointment, whatever the trouble, remember, meditate upon God Almighty and in hearts rest best with Allah, with God Almighty. Allah means God Almighty. So please understand and remember this. The Muslims worship the God of Abraham, the God of Noah, the God of Adam. The God of Moses, the one universal God that even the Sanskriti nations, the Hindus refer to as Om. The all pervading universal God of all humanity, of all life, of all mankind. And so I will turn to the Quran to read you some healing. For those of you who would like a copy of the English Quran, this is made possible to the Electric Mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam and the Guide Islamic Peace Ambassadors Network by the kind courtesy of the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana. These Qurans. This program is prepared and sponsored by the Guyana Islamic Peace Ambassadors Network. The Electric Mosque Teachings of Islam is sponsored by that organization, the Peace Islamic Peace Ambassadors Network. But this book, this Quran, this holy book, is made possible through the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana for free distribution to anyone who would like to get a copy of any religion. All we ask is that you treat it with dignity, 
you treat it with respect. And you do not read it when you are in a condition of dirt or nastiness. But be in a condition of cleanliness and read it with an open and a good mind, not with the eye of a critique, but the eye of a scholar. The way I read, I read the Bhagavad Gita, the way I read the, the teachings of Buddha, the way I read the Holy Bible as books of wisdom, as books of knowledge, not with the eye of a critique. And this is where I ask the non-Muslims who would like a Quran, let us read it with the eye of a critique to develop what? Harmony, peace, goodwill, love amongst humanity. And I go to the Quran. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Bismillahi rahmani rahim For time element, I will go straight into the English language. Chapter 7 or Surah 7 The Heights Al-Araf or The Heights In the name of Allah or God Almighty, the most gracious the most merciful Alif La Mean Sod These words a lot of people cannot understand Till now there is no word in English language that could translate them. From my understanding it is the words that were used by Allah as he was creating the universe and the millions of galaxies and universes in the words that he was reciting. Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Sod, Ha, Mean, Ain, Seen, Kaf. These are mystical words of God Almighty that cannot be translated but they are words of power and healing Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Swan Ha, Me, Ain, Seen, Kaf These words were taught to me by an old mystical master they call him a Wali Allah that lived in Guyana when I was a little boy he was called the Mahaika Dada or the Mahaika Meiji he was world famous for healing he taught me those words when I used to go spend some nights with him. And the words here are parts of that. Alif, Lam, Mean, Sod. Words of mystery and power. Words of healing. A book revealed unto you. So let your heart be oppressed no more by any difficulty in that account. That it, it you might warn the erring and teach the believers. Follow, O oh men, the revelation given to you from your Lord. And follow not as friends and protectors other than Him. Little it is you remember for admonition. How many tongues have we destroyed? The camera. How many tongues have we destroyed for their sins? Our punishment took them on a sudden by night or while they slept for their afternoon rest. When thus our punishment took them, no cry did they utter but this. Indeed, we did wrong. Then shall we question those to whom our message was sent, and those by whom we sent it. When shall we question those to whom our message was sent, and verily we shall recount their whole story with knowledge for we be God Almighty were never absent at any time or any place the balance that day will be true to a nicety those whose scale of good will be heavy will prosper those whose scale will be light will find their souls in perdition for that 
they wrongfully treated our signs. It is we who have placed you with authority on the earth and provided you therein with means for fulfillment of your life. Small are the thanks that you give. It is we who created you and gave you shape. Then we bade the injured angels to bow down to Adam. And they bowed down. But not so Iblis. He refused to be of those who bow down. Allah said to Iblis, and in the Bible, he has another name. What prevented you from bowing down when I commanded you? He, Iblis, said, I am better than he. You, the Almighty, created me from fire and him from clay. Allah said, get you down from this. It is not for you to be arrogant here. Get up, for you are of the meanest of creatures. And then he, Iblis, Lucifer said, according to the Bible, Lucifer, give me respite till the day they are raised up. And Allah, God Almighty, said, be ye, be you among those who have respite. And he, Iblis, said, because you have thrown me out of the way, lo, I will lie in wait for them on your straight way. My beloved brothers and sisters, this is the commencement of self-centeredness. This is the commencement of vanity. This is the commencement of egotis egotistical mentalities. Now, we as Muslims know this is a secret that we expose to the world and even to some Muslims. Angels are not beings with the capacity of thought. Angels cannot think. They are made in constant servitude to the service of God and man. Only man and before him, the jinns, had the capacity of speech. The ability to choose, the ability to decipher. Yes, the angel had the capacity of speech, but in a different capacity, speech by thought, telepathic, to commune with the Creator. And vanity commenced at that time when God created Adam out of clay. And there's another secret to that, you know, a lot of people don't realize. God only created once, one man. He does not create constantly. He doesn't create anymore. A lot of people don't think about this. That the evangelists and the Muslim saints and imams don't think about this. He created once Adam. He never created another man from the earth again. Everyone is created true. The bee, the kun fire kun in the womb of the woman, the mother the holy sanctuary of life. But that's a discussion for another time. And when God commanded Iblis or Lucifer to bow to Adam, he refused because he was made of fire. He believed that fire was greater than clay. And that is where he made the mistake. He, God said to the angels, Earlier in the scripture, you know not what I know. You know not, they talk to the angels, you know not what I know. And Iblis had the capacity to communicate with God and to refuse to bow, which means he was not an angel. He was a jinn, but the highest form of jinn that was close to God Almighty that God could have communicated with. My brothers and sisters, let me take some rest here for now. And we will talk more about the respite 
about the mysteries, about the glory of creation and power. The Ramadan fast and be raised to glory. May the peace, may the mercies, and may the blessings of God Almighty be with the nation Guyana, peace Guyana, love, harmony amongst the races, amongst the religions, and let's build a great and glorious country of humanity with peace. May the mercies and the blessings of God Almighty be with one another. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Ramadan.